<clears throat> hey, did I miss the thumbnail? Sorry, I didn't realize I was live. Here's a <laughs> I have um, allergies. Yeah. I had like a really tiny cold and um, it was no big deal. My daughter gave it to me. I never, ever get sick. And then on the last day that night, I got allergies so bad that I, I even like falling asleep in bed, I was sneezing. So, yeah. How are you guys? So hopefully I'm going to just try and be calm. No throat tickles because we know how those go for me pretty badly. <laughs> How are you all? Can you hear me and see me okay? Everything look okay? I got the dress in my lap right here. I don't know what it is about this dress, but I keep getting lost on it, like wherever I'm at in it, you know, <laughs> like where the edges are, where it overlaps, all that stuff. So my hands sure are pale, aren't they? I think this is zoomed in a little bit. You guys can see me and hear me, right? Tell me you can. Looks good. Thanks, Sydney. <laughs> I see um, Ray and uh, Megan talking. Louise. Yeah, we did. Oh, you wear Sydney? Are you making those? I think we've talked about this, that you've, you're making those, right? I love those. I'd probably make those again, actually. I wonder if I could put those on my dress form. I might be able to. Hi, Barbara. How's it going? Yeah, right? Keep sleeping in. I know. I know. The mornings, uh, the f it's funny because the dogs are like, we get to eat breakfast? Okay. <laughs> it's like they win the lottery. Same with dinner time. They're like, it's dinner time? <laughs> so <laughs> it's really funny. I've made some really great progress on my um, dress form cover. Sorry I didn't stream that. I know Megan was uh, liking the background streams. It's kind of dark, huh? Um, oh, you're, oh, yeah. Well, you know, Louise, I've been doing these afternoon streams on Wednesdays. I'm surprised to see you here. I know it's really late for you. Thanks for um, stopping by. But you, you don't change, do you, there? I can't remember. You don't, do you? So, um, yeah, anyway. We're going to finish this. Why are my hands so icky? They're really not that icky. See, I, I promise. <laughs> Let me see if I can um, warm them up a little bit. Is this what I do that? That Did that change it? it? Looks a little better, huh? Wait, let's see. Apply. Okay. Done. Too many buttons. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, Barbara, right? I know, it's like, like woohoo, it's dinner time. <laughs> and they always, like, take this big, deep nap in the afternoon um, right before dinner time, which is really funny because sometimes if we get home early or we interrupt it, they're like, is it dinner time? And you're like, no, it's 4 o'clock. Like, from 4 to, like, 5.30, they take a big nap. So we're like basically waking them up in the middle of their nap and saying, it's dinner time. We feed them at six, so. <laughs> all right, so um, this dress is looking really good. I'm really glad we made all those fit changes. I think it's worth the third stream. Um, the dress form's so helpful. It's just so great. It's, it's hard to get, it's not hard, hard, but it's a little harder to get things on and off of it because it doesn't have a collapsible shoulder. And the fat, the knit cover, this is also why I want a new cover, is um, it's a little grabby. It's nice and smooth. I wonder what that is, honestly. But um, because of the foam and because it's not like a hard surface underneath, it does grab your fabric a little bit. So you are, Louise. I'm so glad. Oh, it's 9 p.m. there. Oh, that's funny. I, You know, when I've been using a time converter to say what time it is there, Oh, but that's been okay because it was before the time change. I was like, oh, I've been saying it wrong. All right, so this is what we have left. Is this right side out? 
trying to it's a lot of dress okay so we have I pinned this here because um, this is where this goes to on me I think it's a or at least did it on the dress form. Maybe it's supposed to go to the dart because that's where the that's where the um, hooks and eyes will go underneath for the under wrap there, right? So we're gonna put the armhole facings on today and hem it, and then I'm gonna tell you about the um, closures that it has. So to the gab sew along. Um. Oh, Barbara, just the one, the project bag that I started selling a few weeks ago. I'm going to do a sew along at the end of the week because I, I've never cut that on camera. And so those folks that maybe want some help cutting or just maybe want some live question and answer or hand holding, I'm there for you. So, oh, bag. You just mean bag, right, Maribel? Okay. I really want this chat viewer to work, but my camera's right in the way. Oh, that works. There we go. That work? I think they change next week, Louise says, right? They change in a couple weeks. Yeah. All right, let's get going. Um, I got a piece of binding here because I think what I'm going to do is bind this one seam in here. Where is it? This one I did a French seam. This one is raw still. Rather than use the serger. So these junctures where the wrap is, because I took mine apart and kind of adjusted the fit, they're not as good as they were when I first sewed them. So what I would say is check your fit before you sew that part because undoing it and redoing it, it, it does kind of get a little bit off. Especially on these fabrics that are, are a little bit more um, flexible, <laughs> not as tightly woven. So. Yeah, back so long. Kind of a sew along. I mean, I'll be sewing and hopefully folks will sew with me, <laughs> just like I always do. <laughs> but at least um, I know the bag already comes with a video, but this way I'm there for questions or answers or any kind of like material change questions because I got a lot of those from the testers. And I know that bag really, really well. And I know like mostly what works best and what doesn't so oh the 29th of march wow can we just stop changing clocks what if we just all didn't do it you know all right so this has the wrap on the outside and i kind of pinned where that is too like that and this has um, little loops i didn't get buttons and i don't think i have hooks and eyes so i'm actually probably not going to be able to do those i'm gonna have to look I may have to tell hearts about that. I feel like I had some and I can't find them. I'm doing the cutting tomorrow, Barbara, and the sewing on Saturday. And uh, it'll be 11 a.m. Pacific on both days, like my, my old usual time. So, all right, so I'm gonna finish this seam in here and I'm just gonna bind it. So what I was saying about the junctures is so you have your side seam right here. This is the side seam. And this is the top of the wrap edge. And then, then you have these darts right here, which are both like lower. So I'm just gonna, best I can, I'm gonna bind just this open, open portion because once the wrap is turned right side out, this actually hangs down inside of it, so. Nice, Rachel. a cart wait a minute you <laughs> mean put a cardigan or pullover oh are you just looking for like what kind of sweater um to knit first Ooh, well what do you want i say anytime you're gonna do something that is a bit of a commitment do what you really want so that you see it through you know none of that scarf junk you know, like when you're learning how to knit, you're like, dang, I don't need a scarf. All right, so I'm just going to bind this seam and I'm just going to kind of probably stop it in kind of a funny spot down here. Oh, I just unthreaded my needle. Lovely. So 
So I, I would not be lying if I said, seeing myself in that dress form is starting to creep into my brain, you know? Like, every time I eat something now, I'm like, dress form. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, um, I, uh, I want to say that seeing myself doesn't bug me sizing wise, but it bugs me. But the more I look at her, the more I'm getting used to her. I feel like I'm this champion for like, all oh, sizes, great, yay. And then I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't eat ice cream last night, you know? But now that I've almost got the cover almost done, I think that I think that's gonna make a big difference. Yeah, so many unfinished scarves. Exactly. Oh Louise, socks are really fun. They're actually really not that difficult. Just just um use a pattern you know people really like. It's all in how you turn the heel. There's lots of different methods but they all have their merits. And it's really, I love doing socks. I actually don't like wearing hand knit socks. I know that's like a crime to admit as a knitter. I don't like wearing because I wear dance coat, I wear clogs a lot and they're just kind of chunky. I'm gonna get rid of some of these threads right here. Um, they're kind of chunky to wear with clogs, you know, cause they're, it just makes, you can feel every stitch. They look cute with clogs, but I, I'm not a fan of wearing them with clogs. That's just me. I know a lot of people who love wearing hand knit socks with clogs, but I love knitting them. They're fast. You're, they're fast and um, they're, you always get to do something different. You don't have to do anything for very long. You know what I mean? So probably pullovers. Yeah. Which, what's the Nancy dress? That's the one you just got, right? All right, so I'm just gonna let this tail hang down here because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. If I probably wasn't, wasn't like live and focusing on that too, I might just start off the way I want that, but I'm just gonna kind of see how it is first before I get there. So I'm just binding the side seam right now with a snowflake print so I don't have to change thread and because it kind of matches. The snowflakes are kind of a, a teal color. It's kind of ironic, honestly. Let's get rid of these threads right here. Cause see what happens is, it's gonna go like that. So I'm thinking that I might just cut it off. Bias doesn't fray. You can actually leave it raw. I have a friend who finishes her uh, insides of her bags by binding the seams and she just leaves a cut raw edge and it gets tucked in the corner of the bag so you don't really notice. I, I know it's because I inspected it because um, that's how I am because I'm curious about construction all the time. Ouch. But um, and when I asked her about it, she goes, oh yeah, it's never a problem. But I was like, that's so genius because I, I knew bias doesn't, you know, unravel. So it's kind of nice. It's why like Sometimes like one good thing a circle skirt has going for it is that at least that hem isn't getting away from you, except in a couple spots, you know? So. Oh, right, the cardigan, okay. Yeah, you say cardigan, Megan, yeah. Yeah, you like wearing a marable? Yeah, the other thing is um, I find that they slip off a little bit, like the ones that fit me really well. People make them for me as gifts, which is really sweet. I have a pair of Gryffindor ones kind of a crazy pair and then there was this woman at a knitting group who made me a pair she would knit a pair of socks every couple days this welsh woman super awesome all right so now i have that finished where'd it go there it is um the other thing i'm going to do today is i'm going to edge stitch the the wrap right here to kind of sink that raw edge in there and keep it on the edge. I'm hoping that is actually okay. All right, but let's do our facings here. Here we go. Uh, the other tactic I was thinking is sewing the two darts to each other. Here's the darts right here. So here's the wrap. 
Sights him on the bodice. Oh, here's the wrap. Oh my God, this is so confusing. Here's the wrap, here's the two darts. And sewing them to each other inside kind of sinks that wrap down in the into itself. You know what I mean? All right, so here we go. We have our facings here, which I've barely touched and are getting a little bit thready. So here's the front, even though, wait, why is there double notches there? This is the back and it has a single notch. What the heck? Oh, single and double. Hmm, okay. All right, so we need I'm going to be methodical so I don't get lost in these. Okay, so the back is on the bottom. Do a half inch seam. I had my daughter pin my cover on me, like so I could try it on. I'm really getting excited. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, Rachel. Darning socks and stuff. Okay, so we have this one. Front is on top. And I've seen some really old um, pictures of um, some of the first documented pictures of photographs of knitters. I want to say they were Irish. They were, um, they were Irish and they were hauling peat and then they would knit as they walked pretty cool no well you know sydney it does through here you know like through the because there's these three circles three sphere uh, cylinders you know my arms my neck that was tricky but no the cover's actually looser i think the dress form is a little bigger than me on the lower half and almost perfect on the upper half. So, um, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a little bigger than me. <laughs> it makes me feel better. <laughs> oh, it's a pullover dress. That's cute. All right, this is the front. So this is uh, the inside of the arm, like that's the right. So this is actually my left arm. This is my right arm. This is my right arm, right? That's what I said. All right, let's see if I can find my bodice here. Here's my right arm right here. This is probably half inch seams um, on this as well, right? Yeah, exactly, Sydney. I mean, I think that the, like I, the top is almost identical. It was so hard to get that cover. Like my daughter helped pin me and she was having a little anxiety because it was, I couldn't even do it myself at all. Like, and, and I know you shouldn't really, but you know, I have the cover. So I was like, oh, this is fixed, you know? Um, and, uh, she was having so much anxiety that she was going to pin me. It was pretty funny. And I was like, that's okay, that's okay. I, I actually ended up sewing a tab of fabric to each side of the side seam. So she had something to grab <laughs> and pull on, you know? So, yeah. And then, um... 
I marked, like, I kept my jeans on. So it's obviously big enough that I could keep my jeans on. And it was still a little loose. But my jeans are low, you know. And I wanted to see, like, where are these things on me? Like, where are they landing? So I ended up putting my T-shirt on over the cover. And I drew my neckline on that cover. That That's just my prototype cover. I drew my apex on there. I drew a second waist. I feel like I have a few different waistlines that I like. Because the one I'm putting on the cover isn't normally where I would wear clothing. Like, I would never wear pants there. I would wear a dress that high. I feel like my my waistline's getting higher and higher <laughs> because it's the smallest part. Oh, this is on this is on backwards. I can tell. What the heck? I was so methodical. What the heck? So, um... Yeah, and now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to cut it out of the fabric I bought for the cover and then um, sew it on there. I haven't decided what I'm going to do for the edges um, of the armhole and neck. I might just do a one piece. I don't want to do a one piece facing. Maybe I'll just line the bodice. I might make it a little bit like an eighth of an inch bigger on all seams and then line the bodice. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do about my shoulder, like the armhole because I could sew a circle there but I might not you know getting it in there really smooth it'll bug me if it's not and doing it twice so how did I get this on there wrong I'm kind of surprised I can see double notches on the armhole that's how I knew that just now what the heck Yeah. Maybe I matched them up wrong with the wrong pattern pieces. This is a lot of work outfit. This one right here, this dress. I have to say, this hasn't gone as smooth as, um, as it seems. Like, it's, ha wait, how do I say that? It's gone smoother than it's looked. I feel like anytime it ends up being three streams, it feels a little bit like, oh, I'm trying too hard, you know? This is the uh, front, it has the dart. And this is the back. Hmm, yeah, I do have it mixed, weird. That's so weird. This is, what is going on here? You know, I feel, yeah, I think I did have those reversed. Let's see. Wait a minute. You guys saw how methodical I was about that, right? I have two the same. You saw what I did. Wait a minute. Hmm. You know what? We trimmed these. <laughs> but I do have two the same here. I still don't understand how I did that. I, I literally flipped it. That's cool, Megan. It has tons of fun colors. That, is that a needle sharp one? I don't know what I just did. Dang. <laughs> My daughter came by. When she came by, to, to I asked her nicely. I was like, hey, do you have time to come by? She gets out of school at 11. But she was waiting there. She was doing some homework there. And she had to turn in money for her cap and gown. So she was kind of hanging out. And then she's like, oh, I'm going to go to the park and do homework. And. And then I was like, hey, do you have time to come by and pin this on me? And she was like, mm, yeah, okay. She was already nervous about pinning. And so uh, it was just funny because 
she ended up going and getting us lunch and she ordered from Chipotle on their um, app <laughs> and she accidentally ordered something extra. Okay, does that look right? Yeah. Okay, so this is, this one goes on here. So she, she wanted to see what time the pickup time would be. So she put in a dummy order, like a dummy item in there, got it to the checkout stage to see what time the pickup time would be. And she was like, oh, perfect. It says 1230. We can do this. I was like, all right. She forgot to take that off. And she also accidentally ordered a large version of something. So she gets to my office and she had so much food, you guys, for the two of us. She had like this huge thing of guacamole, a small thing of guacamole, a big bag of chips, three bowls of food. And the, the dummy bowl that she did, you guys, had had um, beef, brown rice, black beans, and sour cream. Now, if you can just picture what that looks like, it was a, the brownest meal I'd ever seen with all the sour cream on it. It was the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> we were laughing so hard. Hi, Andy. No way, Andy, really? What the heck? Are you serious? I don't, I don't read blogs, so I'm kind of behind on that kind of stuff. Please tell me mine's cuter. <laughs> I've been making that pie slice pin cushion for whew, like 12 years. I was making it before I started chicken boots. All right. I think this is the one I need. Okay. Well, I i mean, I doubt they know who I am, Megan. If they were copying me, yeah, that would be messed up, but it happens. Mine's much cuter. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, if anyone, I doubt anyone here is local to me, but if you are and you want to take my pin cushion class, it's on March 22nd. There's only a few people signed up so far, so there's room. It'll be pretty chill. All right, this looks better. Let's do this. Kind of, I'm just kind of wary too because we have uh, changed the diameter of this armhole. Remember, so, we, you know, I did trim off this pattern piece. So I'll make sure I trimmed it accurately. All right. It's so weird sewing a half inch seam allowance. It's, but this fits perfectly, which is nice. Which way does the dart go on the armhole? Uh, goes up. Wait. Um, hey crow, how's it going? <laughs> ah. They did crust. They copied me. No. <laughs> you don't like Chipotle. I it for me it's like hit and miss. It's definitely not Mexican food. But you know, when I'm wanting something kind of light, you know, the, the trick is they have other things you can get. And I really like getting a, um, a, um, quesadilla there and they'll, they'll grill it on that big press, which is really good. So, all right. So this is my armhole and I'm going to, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want to, yeah, I'm going to trim it down. 
and then I'm going to clip it. You do stitch the spacing down, by the way, to the body of the garment. Because remember I was kind of wondering, or maybe one of you guys was, about why we don't have interfacing. I've been wondering why we don't have interfacing. Uh, and it is that, that's, they're, you know, you're stitching it to the garment, so must be why not. You could still add interfacing for some fabrics. It would certainly make it easier to sew and stabilize it. I was just thinking today that I'm going to um, make a, take my pie slice or my cupcake and I'm gonna make it like 200% bigger and make a gigantic one. They were asking me today, they're like, hey, can we make this like, can we market it like a doll toy? Like, you know, like for a child's like baking, uh, like their little, you know, play kitchen set. <laughs> I was like, sure, and uh, it's a great dog toy. My dog went after that thing, man. He wants that cupcake so bad. We had to pick up pins all over the house. It wasn't pretty. Cricket was not happy with that. It's made out of felt. Mine's made out of felt. Oh, craft felt. That won't last. Don't use craft felt, boys and girls. I'll tell you right now, won't last if you get that pattern. <laughs> Oops. You were, oh my God, third one. Whoa. Ah, nice, Andy. <laughs> Dark goes up. Oh, did I do that right, Ray? I don't think I did. You know, it looked like it lined up with the, the seam going down. I feel like it goes, I don't even, why don't I know? Why are you guys here? Okay, where's my other one? Okay. Where's my other one? This big old dress. All right, let's see here. It's always so quiet when I stream here. I want music on. I don't have a free arm, so I sew on the inside of my circle. And I actually find it quite easy. Um, free arms are nice, but a lot of machines don't have them. Because you might opt to have the, um, like the bigger table around your machine on your machine like a bigger machine bed you know and you know like taking taking it off might be a pain for you on your machine so if so you can just sew from the inside of the circle that you're doing like your hem or whatever it's great for learning how to do this for surging because you most certainly don't have a free arm on your serger and on top of that, it's really nice having your garment above because on a serger especially, so you don't accidentally serge your garment or, you know, like cut it on the stuff underneath, you know, so. <laughs> right. Ray, you're so easy going. I love it. And now this one was stitched down. I often wonder if Hearts ever gets these garments and is like, huh. <laughs> I don't know what Sarah was thinking that time. I sometimes have to remember not to experiment on their garments too. Like they're fine with mods and stuff like that, you know, but um, not to do an experiment that means someone needs to wear it, you know, because like I do experiments on my garments, like left to right side all the time. And then I see how it wears, you know, like, oh, what, whatever the experiment is, but I'm not wearing their garments, so I can't really do that.
What am I going to do next week? I better figure... I need to plan. I'm really sorry. I've been really bad ever since the new year started about, you know, plans. Oh, don't, don't lose that. I want that there, actually. All right. So now we're going to clip this armhole. Then we're going to iron it, and we're going to press it to the inside and stitch it down. My press, my uh, clipping is, or like the trimming was a little so-so there. I'm so much better cutting stuff like this when I'm trimming an edge like this with my rotary knife now, which is surprising because I would never cut out a pattern piece with a rotary knife. I'm so much better with scissors and more accurate. The rotary knife is just too fast. Um... But when it comes to stuff like this, like trimming the edge, I'm so much better with a rotary knife now. It's kind of interesting. All right, so I might, I might edge understitch this first. Let's see if that's what they recommend. I want to kind. I'm trying to do this the way the directions are, especially if someone is using this video as a sew along, um, because I I do find it, it's not, it's not confusing, but you could get yourself confused. Well, that's the neck band. I was like, it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like they understitch. All right, so we'll just press this. Your serger has a free arm? That's nice. <laughs> Pumpkin pie has a squeaky toy. That's pretty cute. You feel like you've learned nothing and all your... Come on, Ray. All right, I'm going to... Do this like this. I feel like it's not raised up enough. Yeah, it is. No, I didn't see you. One of your squares is done. Oh, Megan, I'm going to look at that. Cool. How's it going? How's Operation Secret Quilt? Oh, I need to flip. I need to switch that. That's cool. Yeah, so, uh, oh, I need to check my mail today. I never check my mail. Um, sometimes someone tells me, oh, you need to check your mail. But I ordered those, uh, oh, I think I ordered a few things. Y'all, when, when you send as many packages as I have and stuff and order as much stuff as I have over the years having a, the factory, you forget that you have a happy mail day coming. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that sad? It's so sad. But um, my mini patterns should be, they're probably here. Ooh, I'm totally scared about that mini pattern challenge, you guys. All right, I'm, really, I'm even struggling just to iron this right now. Come on. I'm going to so press it along this edge, and then I'm going to press it to the inside, and I'm going to press the long edge down, too. You're waiting for the feeling to pass. <laughs> Hudson pants. Do that next week? Okay. Well, I don't have the stuff yet. Oh, Helen, it's staring at you. You stare in the face of that Ellis and you let it know who's boss. And that's you, Helen. You got this. Who's the Ellis dressed by? I feel like I need a secretary during my stream. And then afterward they say, these are the things, you know, like they take minutes. <laughs> these are the things you promised. These are the things you said you'd look at on Instagram. And these are the three patterns that you thought you'd look for. <laughs> Who wants to be so, so secretary? Almost. 
All right, we just got a little pressy press there and now we can do this, put it on the inside. I need to fix this still. What? what? <sighs> SMH, man. It sounds like a fun job, Sydney. <laughs> I, I've definitely had plenty of people in my life like Rayanne would say, don't forget you pr promised blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, thank you. Or um, Kirby would say, oh, do you remember you told that customer you would do blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Like after at the end of a show, you know. I'm in the moment, people. <laughs> I'm living in the moment. I'm, I'm orange again? It's not bad, though. This might be just warmer over here. Fancy little edge-to-edge -edge jacket. Hmm. Oh, it's a separate pattern here. I might need to get my ironing board out for this dress at the very end before I uh, check certain things. I don't think the the felt the quilt felt square here is gonna be enough for this big dress. Looks like I flipped both those. This fabric isn't hard to work with, but it definitely has a little bit of a personality, you know? I think it's worth it because um, it's such a great fabric. Oh, that's, that sounds really nice, Helen. That's one thing I wish I had knit was um, shorter cardigans before I stopped knitting. Because I think like the trend when I was knitting was um, longer cardigans and now I really wish I had some shorter ones to go with all the dresses I make, you know? All right, uh, so now I'm just going to hmm. How do I want to do this? Gosh dang it! I feel all fiddle thumbed. Now I think if you have a lot of trouble with these kinds of edges where it's a curve and you need to turn it under, I think a great way to um, give yourself a nice little helping hand is to put a little stay stitch on the seam line. Even if you don't pull those threads, that little stay stitch edge, it kind of makes a crease, you know, it makes it easy to fold on. And the stitching, even if you just stitched it with a, a tight 
like a, a short stitch so that it tightened it up a little bit. You wouldn't have to draw it in. That's one way to get around it. I find it easier to just pin it and then press it afterward. It's easier for me to press it incorrectly than it is to pin it incorrectly, <laughs> you know? Like I might get like a weird little fold in there that's perma now perma ironed in there, you know? Like that would be a classic thing I would do. So I find it better just to pin it first. My tag's at the center back neck. It's in that neck band seam. Remember I had to take it out. Oh, you might not have been here. I had to take it out because I sewed right through my forehead. Oh, Barbara, that sounds like a nice secretary. Uh, I do under stitch facings usually, Barbara. It's not um, stated in this pattern, so I just skipped it. And we're stitching it the, um, the armhole down to the, um, I need to leave that open right there. We're stitching the facing down to the garment, like around this edge here. So because I've kind of pressed it, and now I'm gonna fix it, I can make sure, I don't know if you can see it, but my fold is kind of, here's my seam line and there's my fold. So I, I did kind of engineer it so that um, it'll stay to the inside. Ow, this iron's hot on my arm. My sister, you guys, um, sent me a picture of Target she was at Target yesterday, um, and for those of you outside of the States, Target's like a store that sells just about everything. It's pretty popular. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Walmart. It's like a different version of a Walmart. Um, and uh, she took, took a picture of the toilet paper aisle, and it was completely empty except for one, <laughs> one package of toilet paper. It was kind of funny. She's in Washington State, though, where Sydney is. So, uh, yeah. I don't know why that's what people's priorities are. It's kind of interesting. This is, what's going on right here? I think I can press the, yeah, there we go. I'm going to press this a little bit better right here. Now I'll turn it under. So if it is stitched down, I'm sorry, the font's really small, down in the end, not as important to understitch. Yeah, it's, um, it's not because you're stitching it down, but there's nothing wrong with understitching it. In fact, I probably would, if this were just me, I would understitch this only because it makes the this part a lot easier. But um, sometimes a lot of stitching can, for some people, they want it to be a little more delicate looking and adding a lot of stitching and understitching definitely doesn't lend itself to being more delicate. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm going to leave this right here because um, I have this twisted seam right here. Oh, I didn't iron this. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see.
Every time I iron, I think I want a guinea pig. I want a guinea ham. <laughs> I want a guinea ham to iron on. <laughs> Yeah, Sydney, right? Liquid soap. <laughs> right? You know what's really funny is, um, you know that I've mentioned to you guys that I really like this one game um, that's been out for a really long time. It's a post-apocalyptic game. And I think I've mentioned that there's so many parallels right now in that game to what's happening in a way. I mean, really, it's, you know, the coronavirus is really serious for the people who have it, but it's not really that serious for the for all of us, right? Because there's lots of other things that are really, really serious, like the flu and stuff like that. And um, what's really funny is in a certain section in that game, you're kind of creeping around in this in Colorado University, Colorado, uh, is it Colorado State? I think it's Colorado State University. You're in their dorms, right? <laughs> and you're creeping around past some creatures that have turned into the, the like, they're not zombies, but we'll just call them that because that's easier for people who haven't played the game. But what's really funny is that there's rolls of toilet paper everywhere. <laughs> and that was my thing. I was like, well, if only people knew that that's not what they needed, that there's plenty of that <laughs> during the zombie apocalypse, you know? <laughs> it just kind of cracked me up. I was like, okay. You have to pick up weird things to craft in that game along the way, like bottles of alcohol and duct tape and um, stuff like that. And that's what I my joke is, like, if only we knew that's what we need. Duct tape, bottles of alcohol, bandages, and scissors. <laughs> Those are the things we should be hoarding according to this game. So. <laughs> Everyone boobs, yeah. All right. I'm just gonna press it right when I pin it. Save myself later from doing this whole turning around thing. Which kinda drives me nuts. Don't, this is the moments, don't you wish I edited these videos down? Just fast forward people. I'll catch you on the other side. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> I kinda enjoy the no face cam part. It's kinda fun. You don't know if I'm sticking my tongue out at you, if I'm eating a chocolate bar, taking a shot of whiskey, you know, all things I am doing right now. Yeah, right, Helen? Exactly. <laughs> exactly, Sydney. We miss all the random chatter. Here's another one I need to flip. What the heck, man? That's what it, sometimes I just tell people that are watching the recording. All right, you can fast forward now. All I have right now at my disposal are quilting pins. Oh, here's a here's a silk pin. I 
This kind of thing though is kind of an annoying thing to sew. And when, I, when I'm by myself, I actually don't pin a lot of this. I pin some of it. I'll pin, I'll, I would probably um, do the stitch technique I told you guys. You guys, I'm, I know I don't seem lazy, but in some ways, like I guess you could equate some of my sewing style as lazy, but it's really this whole thing of like, if you were a production seamstress, you wouldn't be allowed to get up, right? So what they would do, I don't know what they would do in a factory for this. I actually haven't worked in a factory that sewed something like this. I'm trying to think. We did a cover stitch machine, I think. But um, I would probably sew the stitch around this fold line here. I would pin it in like four key places, and that'd be it. That's what I would do if I were sewing this on my own. I don't know why I'm sitting here doing all this, except that this fabric is a little bit loosey-goosey. It's not bad, though. I mean, look at that. You know, like, you put it there, and it stays. It's not, like, going boing, you know, like some of those, these linens can. Um, it's not hard. It's just something I really want to respect. And it's not my garment. <laughs> so there's that. All right. So I think I'm going to flip that and flip the other one, and then we're ready. Ow! To sew. How do you know? I might have, I'm a mom, Helen. Of course I can do four things at once. <laughs> Drink, eating or drinking, God, if I was doing either of those things, I, especially the drinking part, I don't think we'd be sitting or sewing anymore. I'm a lightweight, you guys. I'm not a drinker. I'm an ice cream eater. I like my sugar calories not in alcohol. <laughs> my my daughter said that my husband texted her she's just doing all kinds of errands for us today and said hey um can you pick up cookies and i was like wait what dad asked you that he's not a sweet eater at all uh like sometimes for very specific things maybe but even on his birthday he'd rather have a cheese plate like i'm serious and so um I was like, wait, dad asked you that? And she said, yeah. And so we have this cookie place called Insomnia Cookies. And so she was going there. But he wanted what he likes to call coffee and Kuchen, which is like the, the German way of saying you're going to have coffee and a treat in the afternoon. Kaffee and Kuchen. I can't say it very well. But, um, and he wanted a cookie, which was kind of cute. So she's like, now I'm going to go do that. Now I'm going to go get cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I got a camel bag with whiskey, right? <laughs> Long straw. Oh, Andy's got it. Andy knows what's coming. So wait, are you saying, Andy, is that what, is that what you do? <laughs> I don't even drink, eat chocolate. <laughs> I, uh, but I did make my daughter, I bribed her the other day to go to the candy store. We have this epic candy store here. And I had her pick up, um, I like, I really like black licorice sometimes. Like I really like it. And now that my dermatologist told me that that can help my rosacea, I was like, don't tell me that. It also helps with my sweet tooth. Black licorice does. Um, and I really like the strong stuff, but they, I, they have this one that looks like a little, a little honey, old fashioned honey hive, like a bee skep. And that's the kind of, that they have. If you Google, licorice honey beehive i think you'll find them they're so amazing hi daphne how's it going happy wednesday i don't know about chocolate and cheese why am i getting a little fold now see i'm doing this by hand i'm getting a little fold so far daphne we've talked about toilet paper in a post-apocalyptic world whiskey cheese chocolate Chipotle. You haven't missed anything. <laughs> but only at work. Yeah, there you go. I actually did know someone I worked with that had a tequila bottle in her desk. I don't recommend that. It did not end well for her. 
She was an awesome lady, though. <laughs> but, yeah. True story. Do you guys want me to lighten up the screen at all? Oh, yeah, Daphne? You don't have a sweet tooth either? Is it really, Helen? I don't think so. Maybe some are. I didn't know that. A whole different show, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I had her get those little, um, the honey hives for me. And then um, <laughs> cinnamon bears. So that's, that's the funny thing. I used to love, it does sound like we need a night, need a night out, doesn't it? Um, I used to love when I was in high school hot tamales when I would go to the movie theater. And then when I was in my early 20s, I would get like cinnamon gum or cinnamon um, toothpaste. And I, I couldn't eat it anymore. It made me break out in a, like a red, just my skin would turn solid red around my face. And so I stopped eating it. And cinnamon allergies, um, it's not really an allergy. Cinnamon does that. It's just a skin irritant. And funny enough, I learned later too that when you buy cinnamon, like that you use at home in cooking, that's actually not real cinnamon. It's in the cinnamon family. But real cinnamon's kind of expensive and it tastes a little different. It tastes kind of interesting actually. There's lots of versions of it. So when I got had that big allergy testing thing a few years ago, I learned I wasn't allergic to cinnamon. So all bets are off now. I'm like, I'm eating this stuff and it doesn't bug me anymore. So... But it was really those synthetic cinnamons I couldn't eat. I would still eat cinnamon toast. It wouldn't bug me very much. So, hi, PA. How's it going? Oh, there we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> yeah, drunk nurses are not good. Mm -hmm. You like hamburgers instead? Yeah, okay. Chubby bunny with hot tomato? No. Like chubby bunny, like chubby bunny? What do you mean? That's the only chubby bunny I've seen. All right, I'm gonna stitch this down. I'm gonna start um, at the underarm. So I think this is the shoulder right here because that's the front, yep. So we're gonna start at the underarm here. Lots of pins. I don't know what happened to this one. Did you guys see that that, um, that Girl Scout that stood up for herself um, when the guy was walking towards her stand and he said something like, he was like, he was like, yes, my, he used the B word, our back. And, and the Girl Scout was like, nope, go walk away. And he just turned around and walked away. <laughs> this guy saw it all happen. He was like, oh my gosh. And he went and talked to the Girl Scout, and she was like, she said something like, it takes a lot to, to like, show up in this outfit. Like, I'm used to dealing with stuff. The whole thing was so funny. <laughs> I loved it. The guy was so excited to see them, and then he realized the error of his ways by addressing them thusly. <laughs> she wasn't having it. I was like, yeah, Girl Scouts. <laughs> I was a Girl Scout, so... All right, so I'm trying not to pull, you know, this is like the armholes on the curve here. So you just kind of want to try and just keep it all right on top of it and stitch it down. And then remember also that your fold edge isn't going to show to the outside world, but your stitching line will. Make sure your bobbin looks good, but also try and keep a parallel line to the armhole. If you can't keep it like perfectly, whatever the space is, you know, an inch or whatever it is, just try and keep it a smooth line, something I'm not very good at. I can keep something pr pretty parallel, but I can't keep a, I am notoriously will get a wiggle, so. Oh, okay. Okay, Sydney. <laughs> I'm weird. <laughs> it's the afternoon. It's the after, art, after dark stream, Megan, come on. Imagine. <laughs> then we'd have to be on Twitch. All right. 
This kind of stitching, um, I feel like my presser foot could be a, a different presser foot. It could be the kind that has, um, that's blocked off across, uh, how do I describe that? Like mine right now has, it has a slot right here. The, 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 there's a slit down the middle of my presser foot, which means this little fold could get caught in there. You know, I'm sure you've had that happen. Or even fabric if it's loose, like uh, soft enough. And I think that those presser foots that have the slit to get your thread in there off to the side are better. My, my first couple of um, industrial machines didn't have a slit for the thread. You had to thread the presser foot and I hated that, honestly. Such a pain, you know? It makes you look a lot, oh my God, that sounds terrible. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. You know, the not having the understitching is fine. I think understitching also can make it a, a little bound up. Is this my, this is my, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, that's my shoulder right there. But that looks nice and clean. Right? Just lost a pin here. Something like right here. All right. Let's do our other one. And then we're going to hem it. The one good thing about this being a wrap is that one side's kind of open so you can kind of get into there really easily, which is kind of nice. That is the shoulder. I want to start with the under. I like my start stops. Like on this fabric, it's not a big deal, but you might be sewing one that's a lighter color or a print. I like starting those things. Oh, this isn't even on the underarm. I just started on the dart, like a noob. Oh, well. Well, bummer. All right, so let's get that nice and smooth. So I just kind of smoothed out that little folded edge. It was, it was kind of at a little point right there. So we're just kind of pretended like it wasn't. I feel like I'm sewing left-handed right now, you know? all those pins Heck. that must have been when I was drinking the whiskey I was busy trying to throw you guys off of what I was doing this would make such a nice um, everyday dress like it's nice enough that you could wear it out on vacation, um, even to a wedding. But I also I also think that this would be such a great just everyday dress, you know. These little uh, pins, the ones with the clear blue and yellow, these were the patchwork pins. I kind of like them the best, but they do bend easy. They, they are the finest of the ones, even finer than the silk pins, pretty sure. There's the silk pin. Our little pin experiment. Okay. Can't believe I put my start stop on the dart. You can't see it on this fabric, but just try and do it on your on your underarm right there. All right. So now we have finished top here. What is that? That's that. Okay. All right. So um, the other thing I'm thinking about doing is I think. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. Okay, so in here, there's this dart. 
at the crease of the wrap. So right, it goes like this. There's this dart here and a dart here. I think sewing them to each other would make your wrap kind of um, do this better rather than it this drifting this way and then folding. You know what I mean? It's an idea. Yeah, Helen, it is. Eight <laughs> Girl Scouts, wow! Dang, Megan. I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling for the darts here. So here they are. I think you could just, I'm just gonna experiment with it. I'm gonna make it really obvious maybe where I'm stitching it so that it could easily be taken out by the person who wears this. So let's, I'm gonna stitch this. I mean, I'm gonna pin this right now and just see if that would work. Cause I don't, yeah, so you wouldn't even notice. I actually think that'd be a really good thing to do. I'm gonna do that. Um, I don't think you need this to open up to get it on and off. At this point, it's all kind of said and done, you know? I'm gonna tuck that little raw edge in there too and take advantage of that. Get rid of this back stitch thread. I'm gonna stitch it kind of close to where the dart is stitched, but not right on top of it, just in case someone wants to remove this. This is the kind of thing that would be really confusing to figure out where to unpick the stitches at. In fact, it would be a good idea to do it maybe with a contrast thread color if you wanna try it on yours. Um, that way it's easy to find and no one's gonna see this. This is just stitched on the dart. It's not a seam. No one's gonna see it on the outside. And so I just attached these two darts, see that? Now it is totally secure there. I think that's such a great thing. Otherwise it's doing, see how it's always kind of flopping open like this? So here's the other one. I'm gonna do it to this one too. This dart and this dart right here. Let's see. This one's a little trickier because it has the um, wrap on it. So let's make sure we get it in the right spot. Like that. I'm just gonna hold it down right there. This is the top edge of the wrap, like that. See, this is where I didn't get it lined up that great when we did the second sew through. You can sit there and play with it, but I feel like you run the risk of then getting some issues, you know? Heck, where's the underneath? There we go. Yeah, you I, maybe you could, Ray. The only thing about putting a pocket there is um, you would limit yourself in, um, if you wanted to wrap it to the back or the front, because you have both options right now. Okay, I'm gonna hold this this because see this one has the wrap kind of kind of hangs down a little bit see there's this is the this is the right front right here and this is the hem of the right front and the front edge right so it's kind of I stitched it down onto this dart to kind of clean it up there so here we go just gonna lift that up I didn't use uh, the serger on this dress and I also only used a couple of French seams, so I'm trying to be clever in where I stitch the ste seams to get them clean finished. I'm just kind of tucking things inside them. All right, so now I'm gonna actually let's see. Now, if I I the, my last thing I want to do that's different from the pattern is I want to stitch this down, stitch this edge, the wrap, but I'm not sure I should. If I don't, it leaves this edge inside raw, but if I edge stitch it, I can kind of um, stabilize it a little bit. 
When I go to hem it though, I have to hem it now before I do that. So let's hem it first. Uh, what's the hem allowance? Turn up a long hemline. Oh, you can do hem tape. Hem tape, that's so like from when I started sewing. Okay. I think I'm just going to do like about an inch and a half hem. I don't want to get the pattern piece out to find out where the stitch line is. The hem line is. All right, so I'm going to start at the sides here. What we let's uh let's iron it first. Reason for sewing a seam and then surging the edges as opposed to sew just surging the, ah well um on my serger I do that because so let me let me see let's back up. So you know when um you have a t-shirt. Well I have a t-shirt, but so mine is surged right here, right? Sometimes, can you even see that? Is it too bright? Oh, I don't even know if I can, oh, I, let me see if I can fold this down. Oi, maybe, maybe, okay. So you see this ray, how, oh, it's so bright, I'm sorry. And give some shadow to it. I don't know if you can see that mine surged right here. And so um, a lot of store-bought things will also have a seam next to it, about an eighth, less than an eighth of an inch away from the surging. That's the safety stitch. Some of them, like mine, on this one, is built in to that surging edge that I just showed you. Um, sometimes that, that safety stitch built into my surging edge, it's just not that great. It's not tight enough. And if you pull your garment apart right here, like if you pull it at the seam, you'd see all the stitches right there, right? So sometimes people will surge it and then stitch it next to it as a precaution. Sometimes they only have a four thread serger and it doesn't have the capability to have a safety stitch. Mine has a safety stitch parallel to the surging edge. There's a surging and there's a safety stitch. Um, it just depends on if I have it set up that way because it's an extra needle and it's a different little little bit different threading. And maybe I don't want that wide of a stitch, you know, surging and the safety for everything. And then what you do, like say you wanted to surge the edge of your raw edge, right? Like you've sewn your whole garment and now you want to surge the raw edge. You wouldn't just unthread that safety stitch, right? You would have to take out the needle as well. So it's just like an extra step. There's a lot of reasons people might be doing that. You do what works for you and what looks good on what you're sewing. That, that's what I would say. There's a, uh, there's a lot of other reasons too. It's just like what you're making, what your machine does and doesn't do. Not all machines have safety stitches. Some of them are only three threads. A very um, affordable way to get into a serger used to be just having a three thread. I don't know if that helps. I can't see the, the comments are so far away from me. So then serge on wovens. Um, it's a nicer way to finish things. Also, you limit yourself when you serge wovens, you don't typically open knits back up and uh, monkey around with them. It's just kind of an unspoken thing. Like once you sew your knits, you're kind of done. There's not much seam allowance to play with. Knits are less forgiving from being seam ripped apart. While wovens, you might have like, say you're like, you know what? I decided I want to let this out. So you could surge on each edge and then sew the two edges together. Another thing is you could sew your whole garment together, decide that's how it fits, 
not the whole garment. I, I don't want to say the whole garment, but you can sew like key things like sew your side seams and your shoulders and go, yeah, yeah, this works. And then serge your edges. That's all. So if you serge all your edges first and then sew it together, it adds bulk. But it is a safe way to do it because then you have the option of taking apart your garment and it's still all surged together, surged. All the edges are surged and they're, they're not going to unravel, which is kind of nice. But my thread is so heavy, I don't use the regular stuff. I just have so much of this other stuff. Um, you'll see me usually do it together or I don't use my serger because it's just so heavy. The only reason I, you don't see me mostly use my serger here is because not everybody has one. And I just really want this to be as accessible as possible. We lived for so long without them, you know, but they are really nice to have. I don't think that's outdated at all, Beverly. I, I really love blind hems. You don't see me do them because they're on my home machine. But um, I, I really like them. I think it's a pretty classy way to finish something. I think on a dress, I think, did I do it on the Upton? The Upton would have been a perfect dress for that because uh, remember, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fold this under. Remember um, that was that Brussels linen? That would have been a really nice dress to do a um, blind hem on and the linen, linen is so great for those. So yeah, you can do those. That's one of the only weird industrial machines I've ever used was a blind hemmer and man, that thing was so cool. It was so fast, you guys. It was like, whoa. <laughs> Look at me, I'm ironing the hem first. Aren't you guys proud of me? I never do that. What I would do, if you guys are, are new to surging, um, there's so many great tutorials out there by independent people doing them. But what I would do too is look at all your store-bought stuff you have or when you're at the store and there's a clothes section and you're kind of, it's on your mind, look inside the garment. Look at basic things though. There, You might run into stitches where you're going to be like, I don't even know how they did that. Um, and then, you know, just move on to a different garment. They may have a specialized cover stitch machine or a flat seamer. You might be looking at something that doesn't pertain to what you're trying to figure out. Um, and remember, if, you, if you're if you in the kids section where, you know, a lot of folks shop for clothes the most often, right? Because kids grow out of their clothes so quick. The machines they use for kids clothes are also can be a little different because they'll use narrower seams. Um, and that doesn't really pertain to you. I would look at better wear. What's better wear called? Uh, like, okay, if you're going to sew with your serger on wovens, look in a pretty, like look in a department store, okay? You're not gonna see um, as much serging and I think it's good to see where they use it and utilize it and what kind. You're gonna, it's not going to be used to assemble the garment. It's gonna be used to finish the edges. That's the most concise way I can put that. If you're at Target and you're looking at their stuff, um, they're gonna utilize it in everything and they're going to, um, it'd be a great demonstration of knits, but like I said, you might run into machine demonstrations that your machine doesn't do. My machine doesn't do. I don't have a flat lock. So don't look at sportswear, like activewear. Don't look at that for examples for your surgery, you guys. Look at the type of clothing you're about to sew. Stick to that. I, I, I have looked so often in stores, for examples, and in my own closet. I think it's a really good place to look. But I do think there's a lot more specialized machines out there right now. Um, and so we're seeing less and less of what we can um, do. But it's not, not at all exclusive, you know. 
It's just we wear a lot of, maybe I should rephrase that, like we wear a lot of knits and stretches as a society, especially in the state. Um, but when we're sewing for ourselves, we sew less knit. A, because we might not have a serger, and B, it's harder to find knit fabrics, right? So we're sewing wovens, and we don't have as many examples in our closet of that. So don't use a knit shirt as an example for sewing a scout tee with your surgery, you know? Am I sounding luxury? I'm not trying to. <laughs> the finishing is always the longer part, isn't it? Like I knew we didn't have much left, but I knew it would take a while. That's the same in knitting. I actually really like the finishing and knitting. It's kind of weird. I liked weaving in all the ends. I always did it as I went. Or I would do it like when I was three quarters of the way done, I would stop and start weaving in all the ends so that when I was done, <laughs> I could just wear it. Where's my mouse? Okay, there we go. You know, like, I've got the mouse, but I don't see it on the screen. It's like, where is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. PA. That bamboo fleece, yo. <laughs> that stuff is an animal. <laughs> it's like a whole other creature. Yeah, and using your serger for it would be really great. That stuff is slippy slidey and gooey <laughs> but that's awesome you said the men's heads and pants how'd they turn out they turn out okay yeah activewear is a whole nother ball game yeah sydney exactly to make fun top top stitching like like a flat seamer does oh yeah 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 well they probably did barbara if the if you can tell the tie dye continues from front to back, then yeah, yeah, they probably did. Most likely they did. They don't. Um, so I actually know a lot about that. I don't know a lot about tie dyeing. Tie dyeing is a very specific type of dyeing. It's very common in humble. I got eyelash in my eye. Sorry, um, but I do know a bit about dyeing because one of the very first real garment industry jobs I had was working at Bum Equipment where we did a lot of um, garment dyeing. So say we would make the whole line, you know, we would say, all right, this, this season, you would have your, your like little fashion group. Um, and then you would have your like basics that were carried over season after season, you know, your sweatshirt, leggings, long sleeve top, short sleeve top, whatever. And then we would say what colors they came in and we would make all that all in prepare for dye fabric and we would build shrinkage into the patterns and then we would dye what we needed. So these number of tops, say all the tops were one color and then we would dye them in the quantities we needed for each color, right? Um, but say we had like color blocking became really popular. Say we needed to do color blocking so the sleeves were red and the front was blue and the black was, I don't know, light blue, right? You would have to, um, I'm totally forgetting the word. Cause it's garment dye when you do the garment and um, when you do the yardage, what the heck is the word for that? Oh my God, it'll come to me. You would dye the fabric. Then you wouldn't build shrinkage in, right? You would just like the fabric would come shrink, shrunk, but it was so much work. And um, getting the fabric dyed, because the dyers, they're, when they're doing garments, they can keep the batches a very manageable size. But when it's yardage, it's this huge amount of fabric. They'd have to cut it off in chunks. And then it would be dyed. And then it would go to our cutting department and they were dealing with like bags of dyed fabric on a huge scale. It was a nightmare. They hated that. And so then they would cut those out. And then we had to remake all those patterns 
impure, meaning no shrink shrinkage. So this is quite the thing. But the easy thing to do is to um, dye the garment and they use a th special thread that's, that dyes. I've definitely seen garments that don't use the, that kind of thread and they're j it's just white thread, but I can tell it was garment dyed. <laughs> so yeah, exactly, Barbara, yeah. They turned out well, that's awesome. And you so mostly only knit, Sydney, that's great, yeah. Yeah, I definitely was in a phase of just doing it. I will be once I figure out what's going on with my machine. Almost done with those hands. All right, let me have a hem. So I never finished this edge is my only thing. Do I edge stitch this, you know? I think it would be good. At least it would be a good thing like to do, like they would know to do it or not to do it, you know? All right, so pretty much this is done except for all of this, the hooks and eyes. So you're supposed to put hooks on this piece here, like right here and right here, and then eyes on this dart right here, and then it goes underneath and hooks to that. I'm gonna have to see, like when I try this on, I'll show you where this goes. When I, when I put it on my dress form, it goes to right here, and there's the dart. So I think um, that's partly due to the fact that we took this in quite a bit and this dart isn't where it would normally be now. The dart would have been more over here probably because we just took it on the side seams, you know? So it went through the surgery like butter. Yeah, that must have felt so good. <laughs> Okay, and so this is the under lap, right? So this one goes over here, and on this side, we sew these little closures. What are these lines here? I don't know. I've looked at the directions for this like 5,000 times. But I just want to make sure I get it right. So I don't have the, um, oh boy. Here we go. Nope. There we go. Here we go. See right here. So you add a button. That's a shank button to the loop. And then you also sew the loop right here. See that? This is the kind of thing you're really going to want to place when you're wearing it. So I'm going to make these loops and I think I'm going to make one for them so they can um, put the button they want on there. I looked and looked for a button. I have hundreds and none worked. The closest I came were I have these three. They're not quite screaming Tibetan chupa, though. They're all vintage. I'm sure we've all seen this one before. They're all vintage, and I just felt like they're not quite the feel of the garment. But I thought that this would be a button that could actually go over it like this, you know? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let them choose and I'm gonna sew these for them. So, but one of these you, you cut down. So let me look at that. Yeah. Cut two and a half inches off end of one closure. So 
I think there's just one, right? You like the brown one best, Rachel? It just screams like um, a really old coat, <laughs> you know? I think I'm gonna sew this right sides together and turn it with my nifty tool because it's a lightweight fabric. I think I can do it. This way I also don't put a button on their dress. So I'm gonna make it so they can put the button on because um, because they're a fabric store, I know the perils of putting something on there that they don't have access to and then people being like, wait, where's this? I wanna buy this, you know? So I was just gonna, I have this really amazing French one, vintage French button, but it was kind of heavy. I think it would have pulled on the, the bodice too much. You know how that would be? Like it would pull this whole thing down. This has already got a lot going on it. I'm kind of excited about sewing the project bag tomorrow because I know how to do that. <laughs> I have two cut out though. And I know I need to cut one out for the stream. So that means I'm going to end up with three project bags. I need to start selling stuff. So many samples right now, you guys. All right. So which one gets the short one? That's the question. So now we have our tie right there. smooth out all these little flat edges there. Smooth out my seam allowance inside there. It was a little lumpy. Okay, we have two there and let's see. Uh, let's see which the short one is. The sh shorter closure gets the button. And then, um, And that's the one that gets sewn on the bodice. Let's see here. Like this. Do I want it like that? Yeah, I think that would look okay. And... That's right here, right? Oh my God. How many times am I going to look at this? <laughs> do you do this? Do that too? Oh man. Oh, it's at the corner. It's right here. You think I should do it like that? Yeah, maybe like that. And then we'll fold it up over on itself. I think I'm going to overlap it actually like this a little bit. <clears throat> okay. And then I'm going to trim it down, the seam allowance that is. And I'm gonna stitch it down again. And then close that seam allowance. This is under your arm on your side seam. It's not that visible. You could make it with a button that kind of blends in. Oh boy, we're lost, we're lost. Panic. Okay. What? 
There's my tag, Megan. See, I, I kind of, I lost a little bit on the crown of my head there. <laughs> All right, so I thought I had some pins there and now they're gone. Remember those nice little red pins that were sitting there? That's what that was for. Whale shoot. All right, well, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna place those this uh, closure. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one here. This is much longer. You know, and that, that, ooh, yeah. You'd want it to be tight enough so it doesn't come undone. That's kind of long, you know? I don't know if I would want it way back there. You know, I think I would like, hmm. Yeah, so same thing right here. Overlaps position. Top stitch closed edge. Oh, okay. So then you um you stitch it closed. Okay. So once you have your position for this guy right here, right? This is really long. I don't think it really needs to be this long because you're gonna stitch this closure down on the, the sides and make the hole smaller to fit your button because this is gonna have your button on it and it's gonna go under here like that, right? I don't have an example, but you know, let's say this is the button <laughs> and you're going to go like this with your button. So you just want to make sure that you get this on there so that this button stays secure and your garment's not going to come undone. Um, you're going to have this closed here underneath with hooks and eyes going to, hopefully it'll work for you, the dart. The dart under here. That way, if this does come undone, you know, your this garment goes, the, the underlap goes a lo lot lower than this right here. You know? So, you know, you're covered just in case. I think the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edge stitch. Oh, this is the dart right here, sorry. That is the dart. And mine goes right here. So I think another thing you could do is use a tie, maybe, a very thin tie, and tie it here. As long as it was low profile, it depends on how this dress is going to fit you and if it's going to um, sit really close, because what I have found is I do notice, you'll see in the pictures on Instagram, you can see the point of this right here, under here, and it is kind of happening in a conspicuous spot. It kind of calls attention to that spot right there. And you're like, hmm, because it's right here, right on the bust. So I would look and see if you can tie this to here, to the dart. If you can't, I think what I would do is actually put ties right to the side seam. I would stitch something to the seam allowance and to here, and I would just tie it in there. Something very lightweight. I wouldn't make ties out of this. Um, maybe even a ribbon if you have. I think that that would be a lot easier to position, a little more forgiving when you're wearing it. Hooks and eyes are kind of a bitch. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. I think hooks and eyes are kind of a brat to put in and, and um, also to use. That's just my personal feelings about them though. So maybe that's what I'll do. Um, let me go get some ribbon. I can at least do that. You guys are still here, right? <laughs> let me go get some ribbon. I'm hoping I have some really thin stuff. It's not gonna show, but still. Maybe I can find some really narrow grow green ribbon. I only have, I know I have lots of wide stuff. Let's see what I got.
I brought all my trims here. Let's see here. I do have some hooks and eyes. I did find them. They're right here. So I have some hooks and eyes. Now, what about a garter belt? <laughs> Wait, how does this work? Doesn't this come off here? What am I doing wrong here? Because this goes like this. So you guys, this is like, this, someone donated this to me. You know, someone passed away in their family and they gave me their, their, the sewist in their life's stuff. And so I get a lot of these types of things, bra extenders and um, garter belt things. I used to. I don't know what to do with some of it though. Um, I have some snaps, which I just don't think is a great thing. Let's see if I have a ribbon. I guess that could work. Oh, here we go. What about this? This is pretty narrow and it's navy blue. It doesn't match. What do you think? I think that that's the, I have the weirdest assortment of crap. Gosh, these are from my baby quilt. Someone made me. I had two extra squares that didn't fit on my baby quilt that people made me. She made two, I know that. And the other person was, um, that's what it was, it was late. All right, I'm gonna use these. Let's see if, uh, let's see if this is long enough here. Cause what if we just did that? We could, yeah, I think this is will work. Oh yeah, look how long these are. Let's say um, this is attached here. And this is attached here. Um, and it doesn't meet for like right here, like that far away. Yeah, it's plenty. Tying a bow takes a lot of ribbon. I know that from experience. Okay, cool. I think that's what we'll do. What do you guys think? Do you guys think a ribbon's okay? I think it's gonna be pretty low profile. You know? Quiet chat, yeah, I know. It's because kids need snacks right now. And People are driving home. Um, I think I'll just make it extra long and then that way they can trim it if they want. I think I'll pull from here though. Maybe like that. I'm gonna sew it wrong side down then, right, then uh, on itself. That way it closes in that raw edge. This way, um, multiple people can try it on. Wait a minute. I want it to go this way. Multiple people can try it on in their store and see if it fits them too. You know, this gives a little bit more flexibility in sizing. All right. Let's see where it lands though.
This is the side seam right here. And we know that this went right here like that. So let's finish. <laughs> that that is exactly why I don't use office chairs. Because my, my thread came undone, thankfully, but it was my foot got caught under my my um presser foot, my foot pedal. And that's what happens with office chairs because of that fifth wheel gets stuck under there sometimes. So I don't use them. Whew. That'll get the adrenaline going. Okay. Lifting up the front of it is akin to pushing down well, lifting up the back of it is akin to pushing down the front of it, you know? All right, so we have this about right here. So I, I think that we could put this about right here, inside there. Three inches down. And we'll just attach it right to the um, seam allowance. Let me take my foot off the presser foot. You know, and then um, they can always take this off if they want. You notice my my sight. Where's this going? This this is pressed to the back. Let's see. It's kind of confusing. Like that's my back right there. This is the back. This is the side seam. The side seam's pressed to the back. But as you wear it. It's actually going to come around the front like this. So actually I want, what do I want to show? It doesn't even matter. I know. It's not a wedding dress. Here we go. I like options. Okay. And then we're going to fold it on itself again and just enclose that little edge. And I just stayed in the seam allowance of the side seam there. There we go. That's a really long ribbon, but they can they can cut that. I don't mind including that. Uh, let's get rid of these pins now. We don't need those. So that only leaves that other edge that needs the button. And then I'm going to position this loop for the button hole. Um, and then the for the closures. And then the last thing is do I top stitch this wrap? And I think I'm going to, but I'm going to iron it. I'm going to iron the heck out of it first. So let's do that. And then I'm going to edge stitch that. Let me get my clover clip back. <laughs> so now this wrap can go to the front or the back. And now that we've secured it at the side seam here, which I think was nice, um, it'll really behave theoretically. But I really want to edge stitch this right on the edge. Just kind of enclose it. This fabric barely even, it doesn't even really wrinkle. It just gets kind of fluffy, for lack of a better word. <coughs> so I haven't really ironed it, the whole thing. You're seeing it right out of the dryer. 
Okay, I need a drink of water. Too much talking. <laughs> oh, Rachel. That was nice. You're making costumes for school play. That's a lot of work. <coughs> oh, my throat's getting so dry. There's a lot of ties on this dress now. Ooh, that sounds good, Megan. We are now having something that goes with guacamole since my daughter bought enough for a crowd. <coughs> my husband said he changed what he's making. that kind of a, I used to make like a breaded kind of chicken. I've been eating a lot of like vegan meals, but I still have my ice cream at night. I just really love like sweet potato tacos and stuff like that. I eat a lot of kale and brown rice or farro or barley lately and a sweet potato or yeah let's see kale and um some sort of grain and then what's the other thing i do oh and the sweet potato kale grain sweet potato oh i got an air fryer nice okay so let's see where's my so this isn't an edge that you could have done before you put it into the seam it kind of happens after it's made, so you you do have to put that back stitch right up against that dart. So do it, do a nice back stitch if you can. I trimmed down this seam allowance before the stream, best I could. I'm just gonna do it the width of the presser foot, and I'm gonna get this little corner a little better here too. Well, there's a thread right there. Let's get rid of that. Let's see if I can, ooh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stay. Let's see if I can get this corner a little more square by holding it where I want it. And then I get rid of those threads afterward. Yeah, maybe not. I tried. Just some long ties. So now I'm going to go right through the hem. I'm going to kind of square it up there too. And right here. Best I can. So I'll show a picture of this on the form and see how it looks both ways. I <laughs> love cooking french fries daily. Oh my god, that would be that would be so dangerous. I love french fries too. It's like when we first got our very first espresso machine. I was, this was a long time ago too. I feel like I was just over caffeinated, you know? I just would have like three cappuccinos a day. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is gonna stop. Now remember, this is, like I said, this goes to the front or the back. You really want to be good about your edge. Hopefully I was. Oof. 
see. I'm a little worried I got right into this little divot here. Get that back stitch. I should probably make sure I don't have a back stitch on the other one. lined up. Cool. Well, why don't we put it on the dress form together? I just have to switch to my switch my cameras around if that's okay with you guys. Um Where is that? <laughs> what is it called? Oh, full screen. Okay. I need, to, I need to put the, the switching the camera thing. Wait a second, all right? Oh, sweet potato fries. Yeah, that, is, that sounds good. Okay, let me do a camera change here because I got to move this one quite a bit. I don't want to make y'all nauseous while you're eating french fries or drinking whiskey or eating chocolate. That'd be a waste. Oh, I need to go the other way. Oops. I wasn't planning on doing this, so bear with me. a lot of cords you guys let's see where is it full screen alright so we'll just position it um, a little bright. It's pretty bright over here. Okay. Oh, so nice when it's all finished. really long ribbon in there. We'll, we might need to adjust that. I think I have a little, a little bit of a tuck in the back neck. I could kind of smooth out a little better. Oops. So let's see, that uh, ribbon is right here. I'm not sure how you would tie it though. Maybe you c could you tie it? I'm not sure you can tie it. I may have to try it on myself and see if I can actually tie it. Or 
forgot to press the armholes. All right, so we have, there's that. And so we have our front wrap. I am very matchy mashy. <laughs> What's been really fun though is trying something on and then trying it on, like trying it on the dress form and then trying it on me and it actually, you know, works. <laughs> I do like the stitching in the darts. Let's see how it looks when I go this way though. The wrap fits a little better across the bum. I need to press the top stitching because it's a little wavy. See, it's a little bit of a wave. But before, what was happening was it was doing this. It was kind of opening up along that edge, and I didn't like that. Hopefully, that'll be okay. I'm going to press it. Let's see how this works now. I think this could be a little better right here. See that? That looks really nice. We all the a lot of the things we did, we we closed the top of the wrap that was supposed to be open. I top stitched the dart to itself right here. It's, it's actually pretty, it's invisible on this one. It's a little noticeable on this one. I wonder why that is. Ah, it's just because I was pulling too hard maybe. You know? <laughs> you can just lift up your dress when you gotta pee. Do you do that? You know. <laughs> That little thread I pulled out is kind of a bummer right there. This fits so much nicer now. It was going whoop and it was a little big, but that looks pretty good. I think it looks, whoops, I got a helper. Uh, it looks pretty good. It needs a good pressing, but I think it looks pretty good. Hi, Walter. Nice to see you. We just finished. I just thought I'd throw it on the dress form real quick. We needed some placement for, we need like a placement for the button here. And I've got something kind of temporary over here, but I'm not sure about this over here. I really don't know guys, like I could probably tie it, right? If I'm wearing it, you know? Yeah, I almost knocked her out, huh? I, you gotta hold her when you do that. Other dress forms are like that too. Yeah, so this one's kind of crumpling under there. I don't want it to do that. This fabric has such great swing. I, could, I wish you could see the bottom of it, you know? <laughs> so I'm gonna iron this, I edge stitch this, I'm gonna iron that and kind of get it less stretched out. I think it looks good here. But it is good that like, if you didn't iron edge stitch this, if you, I would at least stitch the darts down to each other so that it, um, 
doesn't fold out. Oh, this is how you're supposed to do it. I'm tying it wrong. This is how you do it. Whoops. You're supposed to tie it in front. It looks great. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I didn't. Uh, so look at that. You know, actually, this looks like it would meet. Here's the dart now. And here's this edge. So before I add hooks and eyes there, if I go back to that plan, because that's what it calls for, I'm going to try it on and make sure because I can get it to reach. That's no problem. There it is. I just want to make sure, you know, because that really fixes it. I don't know how I would trust this. <laughs> I think a frog closure would be nice here, but that would be kind of a thing right there, like a chunk, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I think you could make this actually as a top, maybe. You know, just get rid of the wrap and kind of stop there, because this is kind of cute. This is um, comes as a skirt pattern, too, in the same envelope. Well, cool. Not bad. That was fun. All right. So um, tomorrow we are doing a sew along. If you've bought the project bag that I was, I've been selling, the Chicken Boots project bag by me. Um, and it's been sitting around in your inbox. At least download it to your computer. Um, and um, print it out. We're gonna cut one tomorrow, and then we're gonna sew one on Saturday. So, br you know, bring all your how to sew heavy duty questions. Um, I will be sewing it on the industrial, but I have sewn it on a home machine. It's, you know, so I, I have tested it. And I, all the testers did too. Only one of them had a lot of trouble, uh, and who, is, who knew what she was doing. So, uh, you know, it's possible, no problem especially if your machine set up for it properly with good needles and stuff. And um, if not, and you're, you want to know more about bag making, come by because I can talk a lot about that and cutting stuff like that. I'm going to have stiffener and vinyl. So there'll be lots of tips on binding stiffener, using stiffener and vinyl and sewing a three-dimensional bag that has like, you know, like it stands up on its own, uh, you know, like a lot of bags don't have sides. They are, you know, they might stand up on their own, but they don't have like a, a three dimensional aspect where you have to set in the ends. So if you want tips on that, I have lots of tips on that. I got really good at that. Um, I had my bad days though too. So, so we're doing that tomorrow and Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Hope you guys will come. It should be fun. I really like sewing bags. And let's see, what else can I say? I don't know. I'm gonna finish my Beatrice form cover. Let's see, after the stream today, I'm gonna do that. I think now I'm at the point where I can cut out my one in my real fabric and sew it and put it on the dress form. So you might see that from me by tomorrow, hopefully. I'm gonna put a zipper down the side. Yeah. I think that's my plan. We'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do right here yet. I might just face. Maybe I'll do this. I could do that. I don't want to bind it because it's too chunky. But I could um, use bias and bind it to the inside without turning it under. That's an idea. I could use a serger. I don't know. We'll see. Here's my fabric. It's got dots on it too. It's like a linen cotton. This is actually really cool. So that's my plan. All right, guys. Well, thanks for um, going through the Tibetan Chupa for me. And thanks to Hearts Fabric for sponsoring us and sending us this project. It was really fun. Love the folkware patterns. They're really great. If you ever want to get into patterns where you want to like learn new techniques, especially anything that is... Um, culturally inspired by somewhere else 
these are amazing patterns for that. Or if you want to learn how to sew something the way it was sewn 200 years ago, again, really great choice. They're very, they, they give you all kinds of really cool tips and tricks on that and how they sewed it. And the pattern is set up to do it that way. It's not sewn with today's techniques. So some of the patterns are, but a lot of them are not. So it's kind of cool. It's a good challenge. It's not even challenge. They say, they, they explain it really well. So it's pretty fun. All right, well, I'll see you guys tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific. Thanks for coming and um, putting up with my allergy voice and my throat tickle. And um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Wait, where's my thingy? There it is. Bye.